sharing the African experience. As the population in cities and major towns across Nigeria continues to grow geometrically in leaps and bounds, the challenges thrown up by this global phenomena are fallout. Authorities in the world's biggest black nation have failed to address. The absence of effective intra-city public transportation system in almost all the country's cities and major towns is a national embarrassment that has unfortunately not drawn the attention it deserves from the authorities for the very obvious reason that it largely does not affect the high and mighty in the society. If only this would attract a fraction of the national attention and urgency, the six weeks closure of the Nandi Azikiwe International Airport in 2017 has drawn the challenges leading to the inhuman treatment which the average Nigerian is subjected to on a daily basis uh, would have already been addressed. As we speak, conscious attempts in the last 10 years by the government of four states and the Federal Capital Territory Administration to construct, inaugurate and integrate rail services in the intra-city public transport system in their respective state capitals have left much to be desired as the country continues to live with the disturbing realities of what can best be described as infrastructure disaster. It is straight talk where we get the facts to speak for themselves. I am TV. Tia, welcome to the program. Records have it that the first railroad in what is today Nigeria was constructed by the British colonial authorities in 1878, which is about 139 years ago. Nigeria has at least 3,505 kilometers of old rail tracks that used to link a number of states and communities across the country, but which are largely out of use today, except, of course, for the likes of the 854-kilometer Gosau Lagos route that is now used to transport passengers and cargo, especially cattle, with the one-way trip taking three whole days. In fact, the country's most serviceable interstate rail service is a newly commissioned first high-speed standard gauge rail line on the Abuja Kaduna route that also has its own challenges. Nigeria's first intra-city rail transport service would have come as early as the 1980s with the Lagos Metro Line initiated during the Second Republic, probably responding to the 1974 transportation study on Lagos by the federal government, which warned that unless a solution was provided, the traffic gridlocks in the commercial city were to get worse than what was the case in the early 1970s. The Lagos Metro Line project, which was conceived by the administration of then Lagos State Governor Latif Jakandi, was however cancelled in 1985 by the administration of then military head of state, Major General Muhammadu Buhari. Reports say the then 689 million Naira project, which was to cover 28.5 kilometers from Marina to Agege, was to have been funded by a foreign loan, which was what was cancelled by the Buhari-led military government. This singular act cost about $78 million to the Lagos taxpayers at that time. 
the Lagos Metro Line project became a campaign issue in the 2011 and 2015 presidential elections with Muhammad Buhari as a candidate explaining that the decision to cancel the project in 1985 was to prevent the country from collecting more foreign loans or to yield to the pressure at that time to devalue the Naira. Instructively, it was not until 18 years after the cancellation of the Lagos Rail project, precisely in the December of 2003, that the Lagos state government under Governor Bola Ahmed Tinubu formally announced fresh efforts to revive the project. The administration of Governor Tinubu took the four years of his second term in office to plan for the reactivation of the rail project, including the establishment of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, LAMATA, on January 13, 2002, as recommended by the Lagos Mass Transit and Transport Systems Management Program study undertaken in 1992. The groundbreaking ceremony of the new Lagos Light Rail Project was performed on July 26, 2010, by the then Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola. The Lagos Rail Mass Transit Network is a major component of the 30-year strategic transport master plan of Lagos State, designed to guide as a compass for the development of public transport infrastructure in what is considered the sixth largest city in the world that is one of the most rapidly urbanizing metropolitan areas that has an annual population growth rate of nearly 6%. This is what we know about the Lagos Rail project. It was at a cost of 689 million naira in 1983, but it is now put at a cost of 456 billion naira. The 28.5 kilometer project was to be executed in 1983 in two phases. The first phase was the Marina Yaba route to have been completed in July 1986, and the second phase, which was the Agege Yaba route through Oregon and Ikorodu Expressway, was to have been completed in March of 1987. In 2003, the project was redesigned into seven lines and named after different colors for identification. These include the blue line from Okokomaiko to Marina, running through the National Theater, Mai 2, near Festag, and the Lagos Badagri Highway. The red line from Aguado to Marina through Idu and the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, and then the green line from Marina to Leki. Others are the yellow line from Ota to Idu, the purple line from Redim to Ojo, and then the orange line from Redim to Marina, and then the brown line from My 12 to Marina. From the onset, the Lagos State Government said it was giving priority to the 30-kilometer red line from Agbado to Marina and then the 27-kilometer blue line from Okokomaiko to Marina. However, as we speak, only the blue line has been under construction since 2010, with the four completion deadlines of December 2012, March 2014, December 2015, and of recent December 2016, already missed by the contractor and the government. Um, His Excellency, when he came into office, said we recognized transportation as very important, as we've been discussing. Yeah. And he recognized also that the way to tackle the major transport issues we have in Lagos is by promoting and developing public transportation. Yes. The idea that we could begin to expand our roads and build a lot more roads without paying attention to public transportation is, he found, as not being tenable. As a result, he has put a lot of effort, resources, and investment in promoting public transportation in general, and indeed the road project in particular. Um, a railway, a metro railway, like Lagos is one that is 
very necessary. Um, you may recall that uh, in the 80s, there was a plan to put a metro in the last time. Um, that was not that not happened. And since then, the population of Gilead has grown so much. And the population of Gilead has really increased in Lisbon. And one of the most efficient ways of moving around a city, the side of Lagos, the population of the two billion that we have, is by metro rail transport. And that is what His Excellency has invested in. And this is manifesting itself in the blue line. As the transit station, there are, there's a single cross station, or concourse station, okay. which is just one building. There is a station that has two concourses, basically to reflect the fact that uh, we expect a lot more people using that station. Okay. And there is this station at the National Theatre, which is an elevated station. Uh, it's completely different from what you find at Alaba yes. Sulu or Alaba Uye. On completion, the blue line, which will be operated, managed, and maintained by a concessionaire for a 25 year period, while the state government provides emission fee electric multiple train units and train stations, is expected to convey between 400 and 700,000 passengers per day. This is nowhere close to the projection of 88,000 passengers per hour and 2,288,000 passengers in 16 hours on 30 trains that was expected from the Lagos Metro Line, which was cancelled in 1985. Interestingly, a number of Lagosians who would be using the trains when the Blue Line is completed know very little about the Lagos Light Rail Project. I not compare rail system with this our road transport thing we are focusing on. The metro line far back then, we assuming such thing have come to see the light of the day. I know we'll be discussing something different now. So if government can look inward towards that direction and give us a rail system, it's far better than what we are experiencing now. Even better than the BRT we are we are we are looking at. Look at the one we have, that's even helping, from um, Iyana, um, Onyungo, down to many places. It, it's very bad, if you look at the condition of that uh, train, man, it's not something, I have not entered this for one, because that, it's not attractive. When you travel out of this very country, if you have to travel, you will see that these are what they use. You want to see a station whereby government workers are going to Monterey. Are you getting me? For example now, from uh, Abiyokuta to Lagos. There should be something like that. It must not be within Lagos. People, that, so people will begin to have the mindset of living outside Lagos, suburban. So that when they want to come walk to Lagos, they'll just enter straight to train and they'll come over. But because everybody is going through this main road, we have only one access, main road, everybody. Everybody is driving, the bus, the conductor, everybody is just trying to find his way and all that. That's why we have more of congestion in the road. We need train. We need train in Lagos. It's not, it's, not, it's not in Lagos. We need train in Lagos from, from Lagos to Olina Conflict. From Lagos to like, Lagos. Oh, Abekuta, oh, Ilo State, oh, Geta State. Uh -huh. And we need train. Yeah, and I even see they are doing the train now. They are doing the train from Lagos Island to Sele. They are, they are working on this, yeah, yes. From Lagos Island to Sele. Yes, we need train. You see, if you can even see train with the BRT, it will help us. It will us. All the traffic, all the job, it will come down. People will not, all the people will not, people, people will, you know, people will not continue taking their car. It's like school. People will not continue taking their car again because when it's like school, it will be faster. Yeah, we want to, we need to. As we speak, nobody knows when the blue line of the Lagos Light Rail project will be completed. But what we know is that the 27 kilometer project being funded in full by the Lagos state government is at the cost of $1.2 billion, whereas the state government was to provide just 21.05 million naira in cash to fund the cancelled Lagos Metro Line that was to be largely funded by the 450 million naira loan that was never taken. And then, why the 1983 Lagos Metro Line was to be constructed by a French consortium of 19 firms, the new Lagos Light Rail project is being constructed by the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, CCECC, -E that is also handling the 
823 million dollar Abuja light rail project. And this 823 million dollars, we have a financing loan arrangement with the Chinese Exim Bank that is giving us 700 million dollars. And then we are to provide 323 million dollars. Are you following me? From the counterpart contribution. You see, it on that $23 million. It consists of uh, the rail tracks, eh? the stations, eh? the workshops, eh? and other ancillary engineering features and works. But I also want to tell you that uh, uh, this contract that was given for construction of the lot 1A and 3 uh, does not include the way cars. We are working on it also to make sure that we, 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 we get those things the way cars, the rolling stocks, uh, workshop equipment, you know, and so on, operations and management. We have made efforts to engage officials of the Chinese government-owned China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, the CCECC, on the rail projects and contracts they are handling in Lagos and Abuja. But that has not, as expected, of the Chinese being successful. We have visited the Abuja head office along the Umaru Musa Yaradua Expressway, popularly known as Airport Road, and have gone there on two occasions just to meet the person approved to receive letters on behalf of the establishment. But till date, we have not been contacted on our request for a media interview or given any explanation why the request could not be granted. We were going to ask the Chinese contractors to explain why they would construct 45.245 kilometers of a light rail project with 12 stations in Abuja at $823 million and then construct just 27 kilometers of another light rail project with 13 stations at $1.2 billion in Lagos State. We just saw uh, what uh, looks like more of a demonstration of what the trains will look like. Perhaps this is the best Abuja can get of uh, intra-city rail uh, transport system. But then you ask yourself, is this actually the best anywhere in the world? The quality of the lot 1 and 3 of the Abuja light rail project under construction is worrisome even to the layman with the tracks looking so much like the old interstate rail tracks used by the infamous smoky locomotive coaches across the country. The tracks are also so high and detached from the ground such that what you look at leaves you with the genuine question of how the rail project will be integrated with the road transport system, especially that there are also no accessible roads to even the train stations where passengers are expected to board or alight from the trains when they eventually become operational. Intercity commuter rail line. There is what you call a light rail. Light rail goes on flat terrain. There is what you have called rapid rail, high speed rail. High speed rail and rapid rail, they, they not only commute, carry commuters, they also carry petrol, cars, heavy things, and they move on. Their designs and uh, features are quite different. The Abuja Kaduna you are talking is on the high speed, is a high speed rail. One thing I want to correct you, this system is sensitive. If you want, if I, if now I want to go to London Underground, I will ride them, ride the officials, they will take me around. This mistake has happened twice. Rail system is not what you wake up and go on somebody's rail system. It is very, very dangerous. They are taking a risk. 
because that 900 they will pay them the rent. If you keep the country of money spent there, it's not what you wake up. If you want to go right, secretary, right, you will arrest the project officer of the rent is the minister. You write him, you will bring him down, take him to side. Director of Transport in the FCT Administration, Engineer Anthony Aguaniri, when we took our questions about the Abuja Light Rail project to the Transport Secretariat of the Territory, questioning why we had to visit the rail project, which is a public facility under construction, without seeking his approval, was that of the FCT Minister, Mohamed Bello. Contract for the Abuja Light Rail project was awarded about 10 years ago to CCECC with the groundbreaking ceremony performed on May 25, 2007 by then President Olusegun Obasanjo barely four days before he was to leave office as the country's leader. The 290-kilometer Abuja Light Rail project was largely linked to Nigeria's failed build to host the 20th Commonwealth Games in 2014, which was awarded to the city of Glasgow on November 9, 2014, after the 47-24 vote by the Commonwealth Games Federation. The rail project was, uh, however, designed to link satellite towns and suburbs in states, sharing boundaries uh, with the territory to Abuja city center in an attempt to ease traffic flow and decongest the notorious gridlocks along the different corridors leading into the capital city. The railway that they are constructing it will help a lot because of the transportation and the, due to the, the whole job on the Maraba and Yaro or between the town and the to, to reduce the and in those days, the, the, the railway is working well, but the, these days, not well, the railway is not working anymore. Not working. And in the FCT there, we only have them in the FCT cabinet. This is causing the process. That's, that place is the, as they know, completely inside. It's not good at all. But just they manage. If they do, I'm going to say everything will be. Everything will be. Uh, I believe that if that rail is in use, definitely it's going to cut down the rate of good slow on this express. So I'm one of those that are advocating for the construction of that uh, railway. All the while there has been that good slow, that, but the level of construction for me, by my own personal assessment, is slow. Okay. It's very slow, so I cannot say anything in that direction. So when it's ready, you will be very happy? I'll be very happy because I will have a small sale. It is clear that many Nigerians, especially residents of the territory, are rightly disappointed at the pace of work and choices made by the authorities in respect of the rail project. This is what we know. The 290-kilometer Abuja Light Rail project is designed and divided into six different lots. These are the 51-kilometer lot 1 from Idu to Kubwa and Gogwa to Garki, the 37 kilometer section center D to section center M, and then the 30 kilometer transportation center in the city center to the Mnandi Azikwe International Airport. The others are the phase 3 90 kilometer lot 4 from Kuje Satellite Town to Karshi Satellite Town, Gudu to Ring Road 3, and then section center D to Ring Road 3. There is the 31 kilometer lot 5 from Kubwa Satellite Town to Buari Satellite Town and then the 43 kilometer lot 6 from the Nandi Azikiwe International Airport to Kuje Satellite Town. For now, lots 1 and 3, which is considered as the spine. The sign of the Abuja Rail project is what we are doing now. And, and the, the lots one and three I'm talking about, because of the uh, financing difficulties also, we had to trim it down again. 
it's a lot. One must divide into two lot. One A and then lot one B. So we are presently doing lot one A and lot three. I agree with you that um, the first uh, the time this thing came up when the contract was uh, uh, awarded was in 2007. But you see, 10 years is not too long in the development and provision of infrastructure. Infrastructure for any economy is something that is very, very cumbersome financially and also in terms of engineering the project. Contract for construction of the 45.245 kilometers of the lot 1 and lot 3 from the Nandi Aziko International Airport to the central business district of the city was awarded in 2007 with a 48-month completion deadline. The expectation, therefore, was for the project to have been completed in May of 2011. But six years after the deadline, rail tracks have been laid, yet nobody can say when the project will be completed with the trains up and running because there are some important contracts critical to the project that have not even been considered to be awarded. The Abuja Night Rail uh, project has not been completed yet. And uh, bringing in roads with adequate planning and the capability, financial capability to do it will not take much time. But I assure you, we are working on all those things to link up. Issues of even the main transportation center that is this area, and also uh, the network of the roads to meet in, in the contractual aspect of his contractual obligation is not the rail is a different package altogether, then the road network is another different package altogether. But the engineering designs and final engineering designs are ready. So when uh, a technical man tells you that the engineering design and final design design are ready. Awarding uh, contracts are not it. You can see that to the same way award contract, but there are builders, there are the more difficult ones that you have to do to get there. If I we see the engineering design is ready, then we have gone fast. This is obviously the end of the 45.245 kilometers uh, of this particular phase of the Abuja light rail project, talking about the popular lot B that starts from the Nandaziko International Airport up to the Central Business District. And behind me also is perhaps what will be the last uh, train station here. Uh, and on my right is what is known as the World Trade Center. Obviously, an indication that uh, this particular uh, uh, project, this particular phase of the project is supposed to serve the business community. But then, it is not just the end of this track here for the fact that it has been terminated. Right from the, the, uh, the beginning of this project, it was very clear that it will not go beyond this, except there is the political will to get that done. Because ahead of us here is an NNPC mega station that must be pulled down before any other thing can be done in respect of this particular rail project. Like the other sections of the project, there is also no access road to where the rail track uh, has been terminated, but we found our way to see things for ourselves. Besides the NNPC mega station, which stands, still stands in the way of the project after 10 years, there are also other business structures owned by highly placed persons that must be demolished to reclaim the land on which they are constructed for public good and for many, unless this is done, the future of the Abuja Light Rail project remains uncertain. This, the present where NMPC is and those shopping complexes have not in any way inhibited the engineering process of the of the rail line. The part of NMPC that you are seeing, there are other uh, what we call Abuja Transpo uh, Transportation uh, Center. 
that is supposed to be uh, the melting point for most intermodal system of transportation. That transportation center on its own is another uh, it's another contract on its own. So the presence of those structures are not. But we need to move those structures out and also take a decision on how to start the engineering development of that place. Soon as we pay the compensation. But the NMPC is not and it's not part of the companies that will or it's not part of the structures that we will enjoy that compensation. Because NMPC as you see there was uh, came up as a temporary temporary arrangement. So it's not a permanent uh, feature. They recognize that we have met at top management level of both organizations and we have resolved and they have agreed. We have agreed that that NMPC should go. This is a road. Our road. The road used to be great. Now, the road is uh, not so good. We try to manage the road like that. Impressor curve, the capital of Beaver State in South South Nigeria, the feature of the eight year old monorail project there, which has already golfed 34 billion naira of the state resources, is that caught in a web of high wired politics. It has been impossible to know the exact cause of the Portacourt project, officially named the Rivers Monorail. And this, um, we must say, was one of the many controversies that trailed the rail project, along with allegations of corruption, including the siphoning of public funds. Nigeria's Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amechi, initiated and started construction of the Rivers Monorail when he was the state governor. We have written to him officially even as the country's transport minister for a media interview to discuss his failure to complete the Rivers Monorail project. But perhaps for very obvious reasons, we were not contacted or given any explanation why the interview could not be granted. Records, however, show that Amedi, on behalf of the River State Government, had on October 13, 2009, signed the contract agreement with an indigenous contractor, TSI Property and Investment Holdings Limited, said to be owned by the former River State Military Administrator, Brigadier General Anthony Upo, that had as his technical partner, Connect TFZE, which is a Chinese railway construction company. The Rivers Monorail is a seven kilometer project which the state government was to provide 20% of the construction cost while the contractor funds 80% on the terms of build, operate and transfer BOT. 
The phase one of the project was designed and divided into phase 1A of 2.6 kilometers from Depot through Lagos bus stop to UTC Junction Station. And then the phase 1B of 3.9 kilometers from the UTC Junction to Waterlines Station. And why the phase 1A of the project was to have been completed in January 2014 and the phase 1B to have been delivered for use in 2015. As at the time Rotimi Amechi left office as governor on May 29, 2015, only the 2.6 km depot to UTC Junction Station was about 68% completed. Right behind me is the office of the Rivers and Monorail project, which has now been effectively abandoned by the Rivers State Government. And we are told that this is after over billion naira uh, has been spent on the project. But then, as you can see, some uh, the, uh, the cars are still uh, over there without the uh, real tracks actually uh, being installed. Today, the government in River State has categorically said it will not complete the monorail, thus effectively abandoning the project, which also did not receive the desired attention in the later part of the Rotimi Amechi administration, whose major undoing was perhaps the choice of a contractor who had to rely on a Chinese technical partner that had its own issues to get the job done. Governor Nisong Wike, on his part, though a key player in the then Rotemi Amechi administration, became a staunch and the most vocal critic of the rail project after he was appointed a Minister of State by then President Goodluck Jonathan. And he parted ways with Amechi, whom he had served as Chief of Staff between October 2007 and 2011 when the project was initiated and construction work already flagged off. These hard facts and the politics behind them remain common knowledge amongst residents of Port Harcourt who would have enjoyed the monorail services if the project was to be completed. This monorail and all this one, yeah, this one, no, just, it's a, it's a waste. From here, from station here, because I live in Potato for the past, I've been in Potato for the past uh, 20 years. From station here to UTC, I can track it as an exercise. We do not used to sink in so much uh, purpose money, and we are not seeing anything. If it's a monorail that is geared towards the taking us down to Ogil, eh? we are told we shall clean and find. Let's continue. I am uh, a student of continuity in government. The public pressure plan has no economic value. It's a complete waste, and uh, we do not believe this uh, new government to put in money that is not there. The money loss project does not have economic value because it is not for use. If the project had been completed, then it would have direct direct to the national peace. But since it is yet to be completed, we don't know if the project would start again. Then who 
start with the golf. It is not in the agenda of the present uh, river state government or government uh, projects. If we say the project is abandoned, uh, I will not say so because the Abuan uh, governor, which happens to be our brother, so typically he is still in position in federal. He can make things happen tomorrow. But the present uh, governor, uh, yes, I'm with him. He's a very hard-working man. But before any project is being impacted upon, there must be uh, a proposal for it. Now, how much can this uh, monorail support to cost? The present uh, governor may not know. So you cannot just dangle into something you did not bargain for. I think the monorail should be fixed. I think the Nigerians will like it. If it's functional, it will work well, as a means of transportation. And for me, it's a new development that can welcome the whole part of the world. The Niger Delta. So, so you're not happy that the state government is allowing the project? Yes, I'm not happy at all. We can tell you that the intra-city rail project under construction or abandoned across major cities in the country share some common denominators in several ways. We told you how it is the same contractor, the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, CCECC, that is constructing both the seven-year-old Lagos Light Rail Project and the 10 year old Abuja Light Rail Project. Now, here is also what we know. Connect TFZE, which is the Chinese technical partner of the Nigerian contractor that was executing the 8 year old Rivers Monorail Project, is the same contractor that is building the 10 year old Calabar Monorail Project in Cross River State, South South Nigeria. And the company has only been able to complete just two kilometers of the original 12.9 kilometer project that was commissioned in December 2016 by Governor Ben Ayadi after waiting endlessly for President Muhammad Buhari to perform the commissioning ceremony for about six months. All the engineers, all the white engineers are gone, and we have a show where the complete fuel, absolute all perseverance are the ones driving this system now. So indeed, what is standing here, the magnificence of the technology behind here is all being understudied by a team of young perseverance, and today is hundred percent manned by perseverance. Twelve in one shift, and you can imagine by the time it takes full speed, we're engaging an additional a total team of fifty people to operate the monorail. As you can see, we just operated the train and we are capable of also doing troubleshooting so in case there's any fault that is um, upcoming in the train the experience in the electric train and uh, compared to the conventional train that uh, i've seen in southwest is superb it's, the experience is awesome and uh, i'm sure a lot of capital experience would have gone into it and uh, we appreciate the governor he yeah, has done a fantastic job it was wow so awesome i'm so happy i experienced it so glad enter the train that it was so fantastic that i enjoy a lot of fun the groundbreaking ceremony of the Calabar Monorail was performed on April 24, 2007 by the then Governor Donald Duke at the Margaret Epo International Airport, which was the starting point of the project that was to run through the Calabar International Conference Center to the famous Tinapa Resort on the outskirts of the state capital. Like the Rivers Monorail, nobody also knows the exact cost of the multi-billion naira Calabar Monorail project, which was initially said to cost 4.5 billion naira, the equivalent of 36 million dollars at that time. What we however know is that the 10.9 kilometers of the project from the Margaret Echo International Airport to the Calabar International Conference Center have not been constructed.
the Cross River State government prefers not to talk about the cost and the controversies trailing the project, but would usually emphasize the capacity of what the two kilometers constructed after 10 years of the project can deliver. Like the Rivers Monorail project, the one in Calabar is also using the Internim Monorail electric train technology with a cruising speed of about 40 kilometers per hour. No official of the Cross River State Government says anything about construction of the 10.9 kilometer route of the Calabar Monorail project from the Magretepo International Airport to the Calabar International Conference Center. It is, however, very clear that the two kilometers so far completed will primarily serve the tourism business promoted by the state government over the years. And Kano in northwest Nigeria is the other state, in fact, the most recent of the states and indeed the only state in the northern part of the country to join the league of states in the country that are desirous of providing modern intracity train services to assist in managing the chaotic public transport system in their respective state capitals. The agreement for the $1.851 billion contract, which is an equivalent of 589.8 billion naira for the Kano Rail project was signed on November 30, 2016, with work expected to begin and to be completed in two years, which is effectively the November of 2018. 85% of the contract sum is to be sourced as loan from a Chinese bank, while 15% is to be funded directly from the Treasury of the Kano State Government. Correctly, we have contacted the Minister of Finance, the Villa, about this project and interestingly any organization that we discuss and the government organs that we discuss about this project we get encouragement with the assistance of ministry of works housing and transport and other technical departments we are able to come up with a light rain the first is to sign the agreement covering the whole route, which is 1.8 billion US dollars. The Kano project is a light rail like the intracity rail projects in Lagos and Abuja. And it is also to be constructed by a Chinese company, the China Railway Construction Group C18. The Kano Light Rail project covers a total length of 74.3 kilometers and it is designed and divided into two phases. In fact, it seems Kano State got a better deal from the Chinese to construct its 74.3 kilometer intracity light rail project at 1.851 billion US dollars. Whereas Abuja is constructing 45.245 kilometers of its light rail project at $823 million, with Lagos building just 27 kilometers of the light rail project at $1.2 billion. US dollars. Details of the Kano light rail project show that the first phase, which costs $555 million, is the construction of the rail line from Dawanao to Bata which is to be completed and put to use by November 2018. The second phase of the project covers the three routes of Janguza to Bata, Jogana to Bata, and then Kwarna Dawaki to Bata, which construction is expected to also begin after completion of the first phase in 2018 and to be completed within a period of two years by 2020.
this should be this should be a very good thing on the side of the of the citizens of the state because it would actually help employment wise. It will create employment for people as I said. Also transportation wise it will help with the ease of transport of goods and services around the state. And this also is going to be a good thing because for God's sake this is Kano State, it's a beautiful state and it deserves a light here. And so I think it's a good thing. Okay, if you're doing this, as you're, you're bringing speed into movement, and you're bringing ease in movement, so both rural and urban areas of the, of the state will be affected. The state is a connection of different um, environments of the state, so it's going to ease everything. How is that? This is a very good family. It's a very good project. Australia is a very big city. From Abuja to Lagos, Calabar to Port Harcourt, and now Kano, the hopes are indeed very high. But Nigeria is yet to effectively deliver on intra-city rail services. And for more indications, it will still take a while, except the authorities make a deliberate national effort to prioritize and get the states to push through with most of these projects. That straight talk, thanks for watching, and we must also say a big thank you to our partners, Media Dimensions, for their support. I am Tiv.